Welcome back to our Beginners 3D Animation course in Maya. This is Michael. Let's continue by going over keyframes and how to create, edit, and delete them. There's lots of ways of doing everything in Maya, you'll notice, and there are lots of ways of adding keyframes to things. And let's go over some of the basic ways first. So before I get started, I need to create an object to apply keyframes to. So let's just create a simple polygon sphere and we'll just move it over here for now in this corner. So I'm at frame 1. My playback speed is set to 30 frames per second. I have about 150 frames or so. So if you do the math, you'll notice that 30 frames per second means that 1 second equals 30 frames. So by having 150 frames, that means 150 divided by 30, you'd get 5 seconds. So 150 frames would equal 5 seconds of animation once you've done something. So if you have plans for a five minute short video, five minutes would be 60 seconds per minute, <laughs> 30 frames per second. So I'll let you do the math on your own time, but you'll notice that the frames can add up quite a bit. When you plan your animations, you know how long they're going to be. That's how many frames you're going to need. So for example, 10 second animation with 30 frames per second, that means I need 300 frames. So over here in my maximum uh, frames allowed, 300, hit enter. And so now I have 300 frames to use from 1 to 300, and my range slider is only showing the first half of those by default. So let's start creating some keyframes. Let me select my sphere here. So when the object is selected, one way you can apply a keyframe is simply by pressing the S key. I'll do that now and you'll notice that my channel box entries all turn red and I have this red line appear in the time slider. If I mouse off of that frame, so I'm no longer on frame 1, you'll notice my channel entries are now this kind of pink color. Those are indicating that all these channels are have a keyframe set for them. However, you're not on the keyframe. You're somewhere else in the timeline. If I go back to frame 1, you'll notice that they then highlight a bright red color saying this is a frame that has a keyframe set for all of these channels. So that'll be important later. So I set a keyframe for every channel for my sphere. That means all the translate channels, rotation channels, scale channels, and the visibility channel all have a keyframe applied to them. If I move forward to let's say 60, that would be two seconds of animation, and then I move my sphere and press S again, I've set another keyframe for each channel in the channel box for the sphere at frame 60. So now the Maya will do the in-betweening work and make the sphere move from frame 1 to frame 60. So we've created a keyframe simply by hitting a shortcut key, the S key, for setting a key. So by using the shortcut key to set a keyframe, it's not necessarily the most efficient way of setting a keyframe because you're applying a keyframe to each channel in the channel box of the object and each channel may not necessarily change. You'll notice that from frame 1 to frame 60, the only channels in this entire list that actually do any changing or animating would be the Translate X and Translate Z channels. All the other channels remain the way they were. At frame 1, Translate Y is 0, Rotate X, Y, and Z are all 0. At frame 60, Translate Y is still 0, Rotate X, Y, and Z are all still 0. So setting these empty keys, while can be important in certain circumstances, most of the time you want to try and be a little bit more efficient. But efficiency isn't necessarily what you're aiming for at the beginning when you're first learning how to do this stuff. First you need to learn how to do it, and then you can learn how to do it better, right? So at first, pressing S to set a keyframe is a perfectly fine way of setting a keyframe quickly. But let's go over some other ways we can set some keyframes. So let's say over here at frame 25, I'm going to move my sphere up in the air some. So now that translate Y channel will change. And since I know that translate Y is going to be changing at this point, I can select my translate Y channel, right click and say key selected. And here you'll notice that translate Y is highlighted this bright red color, while the other channels in here are still the pink color. This would indicate that at this frame, frame 25 in this case, the Translate Y channel has a keyframe at this frame, and while the other channels are all keyframed, they're all keyframed at different frames. So by looking at the hue of the red color 
of your channels in the channel box, you can see when a keyframe is applied. At the beginning, they all have a keyframe applied, as well as at the end. At frame 25, only translate Y has a keyframe applied at this frame. So, we can select channels, right click and say key selected. We can press the S key to set a keyframe for all channels of the object. You can also use a shortcut key to set keyframes for specific groups of channels. While the S key would set a keyframe for all channels, let me go to frame 60 here, all the channels in the channel box become keyed when you press the S key. If I were to use one of these other shortcuts, I can keyframe all the translate channels, just X, Y, and Z, translate, or a different key will keyframe all the rotate channels, and another shortcut will keyframe all the scale channels. If you're familiar with the W, E, and R shortcut keys to switch between the move, rotate, and scale tools, then by using the shortcut key of shift W, and actually let me change the different frame, so let me go to frame 70 here, and I'll just move this over here. Shift W, you'll see keyframes all the translate channels only, so translate X, Y, and Z. So if I just move this sphere over here. I know that all I did was change the position of the sphere or the translation of the sphere. Then I can simply keyframe the translate channels by hitting Shift W. If I were to go to frame, say, 85 here, right there, and scale the sphere up, I can then hit Shift R. Shift R is a shortcut for keyframing all the scale channels. Scale X, Y, and Z now are all have keyframes set at frame 85. If I go back to frame 60, you see I have keyframes set for the scale X, Y, Z channels here at frame 60, all have a value of 1. And between 60 and 85, the scales increase to go between 1 and 3.138. So between those two keyframes, it's increasing the scale. Frame 70 has a keyframe, but it's not changing the scale of the sphere at frame 70. The translate X, Y, and Z channels are the ones that have a red highlight, meaning that this keyframe at frame 70 is only affecting the translate channels and not the scale. So scale is not being affected by the keyframe placed at frame 70. Only at frame 60, you'll see here scale X, Y, and Z are highlight red, and at frame 85, scale X, Y, and Z all highlight red. So between those two keyframes is where the scale change is taking place. So 85, I keyframe the scale channels with my shortcut Shift R. If I move now to 95 and say I rotate my sphere like this, Shift E, as you can imagine, is the shortcut for keyframing only the rotate channels. So W, E, R, translate, rotate and scale, then Shift W and Shift E and Shift R are the shortcuts for keyframing only those groupings of channels for your object. And so you'll see between frame 60, which was the last keyframe set for the rotate channels, because they're highlighted in red here at frame 60, all the way up through frame 95, that sphere is just kind of constantly spinning to get to the point set at frame 95, where these channels now highlight red. So we've talked about the shortcut for keyframing all, which is the S key. We've talked about setting keyframes for individual channels by selecting them individually in the channel box, right-clicking them, and from the list of items here you can say key selected. Or by using the shortcut for keying groups of channels, Shift E, Shift W, Shift R, for keyframing all the translate, rotate, or scale channels. So those are the three main basic ways of setting keyframes. Depending on what you're doing, you may want to switch between them at certain times. If you're if you're moving something, you can quickly hit Shift W to set keyframes for translation, then move over and scale, rotate, and move something. You might want to then hit S to keyframe all of those things, and so forth as you go through your animation process. So now that we've talked about setting keyframes, how about we talk about deleting them? Let's go to, I don't know, let's say frame 70 here. And I want to get rid of this translation for some reason. I can simply right click in the time slider, at frame, make sure my mouse is highlighting frame 70 with my time indicator. 
right click and I get a list of different options one of them is delete so I can delete that frame at frame 70 you'll see the red line goes away and when I'm at frame 70 now these channels are no longer highlighted in red and that movement no longer happens at frame 70 that we set we still get the scale and rotation and so on because we still have those keyframes set over here by simply going to that frame right clicking and choosing delete you can delete the keyframe at that frame another way of deleting keyframe is by breaking the connection of the keyframe to the object so if I were to actually select all three translate X Y and Z channels by clicking translate X and dragging down and highlighting all three I can right click and down here toward the middle there's break connections if I click break connections it actually removes the keys set on those channels throughout the entire time slider you'll notice not only are they not highlighted in red they're not highlighted in pink either meaning that there's no keys set for translate X Y and Z there are still these little red hash marks on the time slider because we do have keyframes set for the other channels at those positions on the time slider but now translate X Y and Z all the movement channels are no longer keyframed at all meaning as I play this you'll see the sphere does not move it does start to do its scaling and rotating that we set earlier but now it's no longer moving at all because we've broken the connections of those channels and deleted all the keyframes associated with them I can press Z to undo that and you see now it's back to the way it was so if you decide you need to get rid of all the keyframes on certain channels you can simply right click on that channel or group of channels and choose break connections so now let's talk about editing our keyframes there are lots of ways to edit keyframes but one of the basic ways is by simply moving them within the time slider itself so if frame 60 you see we have this keyframe set for all of our channels for the sphere if I actually hold shift left click and drag you'll notice I'm dragging in the time slider this red highlighted region and this region is a selection region I can click and drag as much as I want but for this one particular frame we're just going to drag a little bit a little red region around that frame and this selects all the frame all the keyframes within that region in this case there's only one keyframe that we have selected within this region at frame 60 so now I can click and drag on this red region and move that keyframe I can move it over here to say frame 35 so now that keyframe has been moved over here so where it was at frame 60 now it's at frame 35 so again holding shift click and drag to select a region in the time slider and you can select multiple keyframes within this region such as I have here I have these both of these keyframes selected within the region I can then click and drag to move those keyframes around and then just clicking anywhere in the time slider will deselect the selected region so that's one way of editing keyframes and moving them another way is by using the graph editor so we'll be going over the graph editor in the next part of our series the graph editor and I'll show you here it's under Windows animation editors graph editor and you see here I have lots of little noodly bits <laughs> from what I've been doing here showing you the setting and deleting and editing keyframes in the time slider so there's lots of little curvy lines everywhere and I'll be explaining what all these mean and how they work in the next part. I'll see you then.